right, Lord. You're the best. You're the man, Judge. All right. You steal my drink. Yeah. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, as my old elementary school teacher used to say. Uh, it's another episode of Chopping Up with Kadar. Of course, I'm Perry White. He is the man himself, Roger Kadar. And what we need you to do, if you're tuning in, if you're watching this later, hit that subscribe button. I've noticed y'all been listening to me. The subscribers are going up, coach. They listening. They paying attention. So keep hitting that subscribe button. And so you can follow us and be able to keep up with this show when we get live. Because you know what? You'll get that little notification. It'll come down and say, hey, Chopped It Up with Kadar is now live. So you'll be able to catch us. But if not, you can always go back and listen to any of the previous episodes that we have. And man, we are rolling. It's December. I love this month. Ask me why. It's your birthday. It is my birthday this Saturday. Come on, man. Give me some excitement. Don't give me some. Mm, mm. And don't give so, me. Uh, mm. So, I mean, you know, listen, you got that <laughs> None of that means a whole lot to me. I understand. We just got to keep making, putting one foot in front of the other. He gave me the coach, you know, like coaches don't get excited about things. It's just like, mm, all right, well, thank you. Hey, let's go to him. Look, look, look at his shirt today. Like, I'm feeling you today. It's, you're giving me some young vibes today, man. Look at that shirt. Show it off there. The, what does it say? The power of one HBCU Southern University. Talk to me about that shirt. Oh, uh, you know, this is a guy. Uh, who found me some kind of way. I don't know him. Mm -hmm. And he's an engineer in Augusta, Georgia. Oh. Some kind of way he found me and called me. And uh, he was talking about, obviously, he wants to do something with uh, baseball at all of the HBCUs. Okay. And he wanted to get MLB involved. That's my involvement. And obviously, we talked. And uh, he said, I want to send you something. And he sent me this shirt. Were you skeptical at first? Because you know you got to give out your address and, and information. Were you a little skeptical? Not really. Okay. Uh, this guy, you know, I mean, he was trying to do something. I mean, he he was, he was had sent me some information previously. Okay. What he was trying to do. He had something in writing, and I critiqued it and told him adjustments needed to be made. And as it relates to try and send it forward, mm -hmm. that someone will look at it. I said, the odds are you sending a thick piece of uh, information with a lot of pages. People ain't got time to read all of that. Mm -mm. But if you got something that you can critique it and make it short and right to the point and show cause, then you got a chance for them to be a little uh, interested in it. Mm -hmm. And what about the hat? You know, I always go to the hat. Give me some history of the hat today. This is a uh, this is a Panamanian hat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just a regular hat. This one don't have a story like the rest. Because no, typically you got a unique story with these hats. This one doesn't really have a story. It's something okay. that, uh, you know, I was shopping one day and I saw it <laughs> in one of those little boutiques and liked it and it fit it and I got it. You know, for a hat guy that you are, because I love your style of hats, what goes into that? Because this is an honest question. Because everybody's not a hat guy, but you are. And I love your style as a hat. What goes into a Roger Kadar style hat where something stops you say, you know what? Damn, that looks like a good hat. Well, you know, for years I only wore cap. Mm -hmm. When I played baseball, I was never a hat wearer. Yeah. I only wore cap during the season. Didn't wear a cap out of season. And as I got older and my, cut my hair shorter, I wanted to wear a hat. And I thought that it, it goes along with me. And I've seen some in the older baseball players mm -hmm. or more mature baseball players. They begin to wear hats and something that was stylish and everything. So, What kind of hairstyle did you used to rock in the day? Because you said cut your hair short. What, did, at one point, were you big afro? 
Big afro. All right. And during, then, the, during the days, and I had a lot of pride in my afro. <laughs> afro. You know, and... Uh, Talk to me about having pride. Look. <laughs> yeah. You Talk know, to me about having pride in your afro. What my, does that mean? was combed. The difference <laughs> is, I had it combed and groomed. You had a pick with you at all times? Not all times. Okay. Only when I was in the room or somewhere. Catch you with I, one of these yeah, right I didn't pick, I wasn't picking all day. Okay. You know. And then you go from the afro to what? Uh, Afro to start getting it shorter as I got older. I Did you used to rock a high top fade? Yeah, high top fade. High, high top fade. Yeah. You rocked a high top fade? I don't know if you call it rocking. But, <laughs> you know, see, I learned something about the Obama hugs. So the rocking in the high Rocking top. means you wore it, basically. Wore it. Okay, yeah, well, you was rocking that high top fade. Mean you wore a high top fade? I did. Okay. Well, you, that was the Steve Harvey is what I call it. You know Steve Harvey? Yes, I yeah, do. Yeah, Steve Harvey used to rock the box high top fade, man. And then you go from the high top fade to what, just the low even cut? Low even cut, and now I'm really down to really down to <laughs> it. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, really down to it, you know. Did you did you ever have the waves? Did you ever no bust waves. the waves? Didn't do no the waves? waves. Never okay. did the waves. Okay. You looking younger these days. Yeah, I never too. did the process. You know when I was growing up. You may be too young to know about process. Oh, you but would. you heard of it. Yeah. People back in the days. Is that what like the curl? Yeah. You know, <laughs> African American back in the days, the hot comb and process the hair. Oh, you, the perm. They would put that hot stuff in it. Yeah, the Jerry Curl, Coach. Je it wasn't Jerry Curl. He talking about the press, the perm. The press. Yeah, the pimp oh, look. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So I never went, got into that. <laughs> I was never going to get... I, I can't was, even see you with a press, right? I can't. Man, I would never get it. I know people who used to burn their hair. That's what... When I looked at them doing it with that uh, with that hot comb and they put in the hair yeah. with frying, you know. On the boondocks, there used to be a guy named a pimp named Slipback. Slickback. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, pimp named Slickback had that press. Oh, man, that press, you can't go anywhere because if you do, that humidity will frizz you out. Yeah. 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 No, you stay away from that, Coach. I stay. Listen, you, I'm never. I didn't get involved in it when I was young. Certainly, I'm not getting involved in it now. Let's move on. Well, you see me. I'm, I'm more of the dread wave, and I know it took my mom forever. I had always wanted to grow my hair out since we're talking about hair. My mom wasn't a fan of growing your hair out. And when I was younger, she used to make me get this cut that I hate to this day, a ball fade. Anybody? Yep. Uh, oh. You know about me the ball too. fade? My dad was in the military, so it was it was ball fade or nothing. I hate the ball fade because to me, I call it the chili bowl. It's just where they leave this faded out right here, but it all the way around is nothing. I absolutely hated it. You She's, look like a nice young man with that. The ball fade? <laughs> yes. Yeah, young man. I'm a man now. So she comes, so she finally says, you know what? If you want to change it, make your own money, pay for your own haircut. You know what I did? Start cutting yards. So I'm pay for my own damn haircut. So all I wanted was the even cut because you can't get them waves and blow my time. You wanted the waves, coach. That was what was hot. This, you want as we used to say, you want to make them seasick. So you don't know nothing about that. That's look, make them swim, huh? Man, I wanted that thing when I took that that wave I cap off. Talk about something else. Well, we're talking about good hair. Hair is a topic, man. Oh, oh, I understand though. Hair for you. We started. got something big going on. What's Let's going talk on? About it. See, he didn't want to talk about his hair. <laughs> He told us about his afro. He don't want to hear about my wave adventures back Dude, in the day. They see it every day. They see you every day. <laughs> well, I got the dreads now. So, you know, them waves, my days of the waves are completely behind me. Coach. Coach to coach talking about where well, you want to go. Deion Sanders? We'll go wherever you want to go. Let's go with it, Dean. You don't want to let me talk about my hair where we were talking about. And you're talking about hair. Deion Sanders was the king of the of the wet. He used to rock the wet hair. Yeah, Jerry Curl. Yeah. He was he was selling himself and all that stuff. Then just took his hair off his head. Now all that chemical and all that whatever that stuff he put in. But Deion Sanders, former coach at Jackson State, of course, uh, took his team to a SWAC championship, eleven and zero heading into the game. Of course, it's against the team right there on your shirt and right here on this jersey, Southern University. It couldn't have been any better to help us out with some content today, right? Southern versus Jackson State. Jackson State winners of the SWAC East, Southern winners of the SWAC West. Jackson State comes in undefeated, one of the best recruiting classes in all of football, not just FCS, but football. First time ever a number one recruit came to a HBCU, a five-star athlete. Eric Dooley in his first year 
takes his team to a SWAG championship. And, man, did you watch the game? Yes, sir. Oh, tell me what you thought before I just get Well, it was it. pretty horrible in the first <laughs> part of the game. And I'm being honest. Okay, I keep mean, it, it real. I really, mean, it was really difficult to watch. But I have to give Southern credit and Coach Doolin and his staff. They found a way in the second half to at least make it competitive. They, they changed quarterback. He didn't stop trying to find an answer. He got to his, the third quarterback, mm -hmm. McDonald, and McDonald sh really made him look good. I only wish that he had, if there was any way possible, McDonald would, would have been in there earlier, and I think it would have been a completely different game. I believe so as well. You know, but uh, it goes something about seniors. Seniors seniors are different. That's why you need them on your team. And that kid, McDaniel, Bubba McDaniel, was a senior. Five-year player, right. and his program went through three coaches, Dawson right. Odoms, Jason Rollins, and now no, Eric right. Dooley. He's a guy I thought we, with something on the line, He's got something to play for. Right. And I think for Southern, when you look at their quarterback, Bashawn McCray, number 11, he has struggled coming into this game over the past four games. He had not passed for over 100 yards, and he has only thrown one touchdown since October. And I continuously ask this question. You know, I am critical of a lot of things as well on the outside looking in. I can never remember any time that I can look back of a guy remaining a starter over a month period at the quarterback position, which is the most important when you talk about offense, and he has not equated to any touchdowns nor pass for over 100 yards. Clearly, it was something Dooley saw in him, but clearly there was some growing pains because as soon as he got in his game, he threw an interception as well as a fumble. Both of those resulted in points, and because of that, it put Southern down early in this game, in which by the time they decided to go to Bubba McDaniel, he brought them into the game. He brought life back because this thing looked like it was going to get – Ugly early. It was 26-0 in the first quarter. But the hole just seemed to be a little bit too deep. The final <clears throat> score was 43-24. to He was able to manage 24 points on the board for Southern. It was just a little bit too deep. But if you take away those 20-plus points off those three turnovers, Southern's in a ball game Saturday with Bubba McDaniel. Well, this is the thing because we have to be realistic. Southern doesn't have the athletes Jackson have. And you got to be realistic. But anybody who is realistic will admit it. There are some people who won't, but that's okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's why you can't afford to get behind a team that's got superior athletes. That's you. it. <clears throat> and that happened. And uh, But, you know, they made it back. Uh, uh, they came, scored 30, 24 points, and at least the defense show, showed a little better. I just, you know, <clears throat> you know, the thing is, what I think made me successful as a coach is that <clears throat> when I didn't have really good players, I understood their shortcomings and never asked them to do something that they couldn't do. That's it. Uh, at HBCUs, you're not going to have good defensive linemen. Jackson State does. You're not going to have good offensive linemen. Yeah, that's typically where the game is different when you start to play these other teams in the trenches. In the trenches. So mm -hmm. what you got to do, understand, is that uh, them guys ain't going to block all it. You got to develop quick stuff. You got to stay with quick stuff. You know, two, three, side, bam, give yeah. the other ball. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to run it quick, everything is quick. Yeah. And flares out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. That's how – the way you're going to be successful when, you know, and I I keep seeing people ask people. Let's make sure we get coach on here. I, I keep seeing people trying to ask kids to do stuff that they're not going to be able to accomplish. And once they start failing enormous at that, then you lose the confidence. And that's kind of the tough part of coaching, making sure you put a kid in a position to be successful and not really exploit their weakness, but right. to try to take advantage. And I don't like to use the word take advantage, but to showcase the strength. Exploit. Yeah. Ex you, you exploit the weakness. Then the, <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, it looked like for Southern with their quarterback, Bashawn McCray, he, and, and this is what I've been seeing over social media because not only – however you brought it up, but a lot of people have noticed that it just seemed like this kid was put in a position that was going to help, that was going to show him failing more so than showing him be successful and putting him in a situation like that uh, really wasn't a good look for him. And it goes back to coaching when you're talking about 
when you go into a game and you see a kid has been struggling over the past month, and let's just say he's your pitcher, and you need to get in and get a game started. You know early on you can't put a guy in that's been struggling over the past month to start the game out because he get these runs out early. It's going to be hard to deal with that as the game go on to try to battle back from that. When you talk about a coaching, how hard is it for a coach to evaluate talent? Because one of the biggest things that really has turned a lot of fans off was in his post-game speech, it was asked by the media, hey, Coach Dooley, if you were to do anything different, would you have started McDaniel knowing that McCray has struggled over the past month? And he said, absolutely not. And for a lot of people, that was just like an arrogant, like, you know what, instead of giving praise to this kid and, and maybe a guy that stuck with you and, and being a part of this program and comes in and be and basically is a hero, you know. Well, but we don't know all of the, the – see, that's a – even though the question was asked and it was answered that way, we still don't know all of the reason why he decided to do that. Mm -hmm. See, coaches are at practice every day. That's right. They know that players better than anyone else, mm -hmm. and even though my, that uh, whenever McCray was the what's the McCray was the starter, McDaniel, yeah, McDaniel was the, the backup. Yeah. McCray struggled. I did like how he struggled. What is his? You know, my thing is: is he a runner? Is his strength or passing? Passing doesn't look like his strength. He hadn't passed for a hundred yards right, in four so games, did, so it doesn't appear to be his strength. And uh, so, I don't know, but the coaches must see. Remember, they want to win. But that's what I want to ask. Does ego sometime and pride as a coach come into sometime when you look at decision making? Well, we all have egos and pride. Mm -hmm. Yes, it comes into that when you make decision making. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the case in Coach Doolis. And I'm situation. asking you because you coached in a lot of championship right. games and had to make decisions on who's going to start this game, who's going to be my best guy in having – because we talked about it with analytics – and then what you see with the eye test. And analytics may say, hey, do this, do that. But the eye test, the day of the game, may say, no, I may need to go this we, way. And keep in mind, football and basketball, you could take someone out and put them back in. Mm -hmm. Baseball, you couldn't. Yeah. So the decision you made had to be a lot more solid. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I always uh, had a pretty good idea based upon past performances. Mm hmm whether or not I could feel good about starting this guy against somebody. Let's say I'm going to start a pitcher against a guy who is going to be difficult for us to score run. Mm -hmm. I have to really feel good about that pitcher because if we give up a bunch of runs, we it, it, it gives us a great chance of losing this game. Mm -hmm. So if I do start him, I have to have a quick hook. And make He's sure on a leash, huh? huh? You're going to have him on a leash, short yeah, leash. Yeah, short leash. Yeah. yeah. So I could pull. And uh, so that's the kind of thing. But, you know, I, I don't really want to talk much about the game. I want to talk more about the, the decision for Deion Sanders to leave. Mm -hmm. I put that one on the president at that university. I think the president made a bone-head decision. Well, let's... Like, Let's do this. Let's take a break. Okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to hear exactly where you going with this. All right. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. We got to pay some bills. More we're chopping it up with Kato. All right. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locks in that outfit for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low. Or make, make the, the old bell, bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, you're more than a playground.
It is time to trade, trade in your isolation for celebration, celebration to break out and get away. And, and at Baton Rouge, Rouge Metro Airport, Airport you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check in that's a breeze, and non-stop and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com have a passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, hey, Coach Roger, Roger Kador here. here. There's, There's something about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's Road four generations strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach. There's, There's no, no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just, we just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to, to trade in your isolation for celebration, celebration to, to break out and get away. And, and at Baton Rouge, Rouge Metro, Metro Airport, Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check in that's a breeze, and non-stop and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com All right, we're back with more of Chopping It Up with Coach Kadar. I'm Perry White. He's Roger Kadar. And, of course, you're hearing my voice. Hit that subscribe button right there below this video. Get that notification every time we go live as well as to be able to subscribe. And we want your support. All right? It's free. It don't cost anything to support. Give us the same love, all right? We're supporting you by giving you this good information. Support us by just being able to follow up and keep up with us. That subscribe button let you know every time we go live, every Monday at 10 o'clock to 11, as well as give you an opportunity to go back and check out any of the previous episodes. And as well as we just want to hear from you, leave a comment down in the comment section. Let us know how you feel about the show and talk to us, all right? Coaches, we were talking about before we went to break, uh, we talked about the SWAC championship, did a recap of it. Jackson State wins the game 43-24. to Come to find out it is going to be Deion Sanders' last game at home in Jackson. He's going to coach this team in the Celebration Bowl. But, of course, all the indications came out the night before and pretty much the day before that ESPN broke it. And then you start to see it all over the place that – Coach Deion Sanders was going to accept the head coaching job at Colorado, reported about $5 million a year over five years, looking at about a total of $29.5 million for a contract going over to Colorado. He wins the game afterwards. They do all of the pregame, all of the postgame celebrations. He goes and sits with his team and breaks the news to his team and say, hey, I did not want this to come out. It was not me that broke the story, but it got out. But out of respect, I sit with you guys and I talk to you guys about what's going to happen, what's next. He did promise them as Jackson State won the SWAC championship, they'll be playing in the Celebration Bowl against, against North Carolina Central, the SWAC champ versus the MEAC champ. But he has already flown to Colorado. He has met with the team at Colorado. He has done his introduction speech, being introduced as the next head coach at the University of Colorado. But now the conversation swirls around Deion Sanders coming to Jackson State and in two short years leading them to back-to-back -back SWAC titles and now leaving Jackson State. And everybody seems to have an up-and-down opinion. What's yours in terms of Deion? Well, I, I, I put it on the president. The president is a bonehead guy. 
and he, he reminds me a lot of a president at HBCUs. They can't make financial decisions based upon what they have in their hand. Mm -hmm. It's better than what you got in the bushes. He knew what he had with Dion. Mm -hmm. He raised a lot of money. Let's say Jackson was raising $10 million a year. This guy brought in $50, $60 million. Why wouldn't you give him some of that private money to meet the obligation and you're still ahead? On top of meeting with the business community of Jackson, because Jackson was making the city between 20 and $30 million every time Jackson had a home game because Jackson State led FCS in attendance, averaging nearly 40,000 fans yeah, but, a game. Let me get to something there. Okay. That was some, something came out about the attendance. You know, Dion had a, a contract with them if you – Yeah, it was a clause in the contract clause. where he got a percentage of the attendance. And you, why you think they played around with the numbers? They played with the numbers. How do you expect to keep someone who is making you money and then you're trying to screw him on one with the numbers? Mm -hmm. You're fudging the numbers. You know, you got 50,000, you say you got 35. Why would you do that? See, this is the kind of stuff that people with small thinking mentality mm. and not have business mentality knowing that if someone earns something, we got to give it to them. That's right. Value. It gives value. It makes the university look good. And if you're running the university, certainly you're going to look good too. I can't understand it. It goes over and over again where people pull that kind of stuff. And they ought to fire that president mm. for letting that man go. He didn't try to meet it. If, if Colorado say, the AD say, I'm offering you this, but I don't have the money yet. I got to go find it. Why couldn't he offer him the same thing? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to it as we talk about the lack in limited resources, particularly at HBCUs. And you it wasn't the case at Jackson. He well, was raising money. Well, yeah. I'm not going to let that one fly. All right, all right. Because he had raised the amount of money Jackson State was getting in had gone tenfold since Dion been there. Mm-hmm. So the money was there to be able to be competitive. He went and offered Dion $1 million to stay. Is that how much they did offer? That's all. Yeah. A slap in the face. Do you think it, Jackson State can sustain being able to pay no. him a million plus dollars a year, though? Yes, they can because you got the man. Mm -hmm. He knows that he, him getting that money is based upon him making things happen. You got me? Mm -hmm. You see, as long as he was going to be there, he was going to get players. He was going to make it on ticket sales. He was going to make it on advertising. He was going to make it on promotion. It was just unlimited gifts. People were going to give. It was unlimited what they could have done if they had the insight. But nobody at those schools want to hire someone who thinks out of the box. Mm -hmm. Boy, I would have loved to have been in that situation. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have been afraid. Yeah. Because I would have known what I have. You have to know what you have. You have to know what you have. And in, in, in taking account of the things that he's pointing out to you that you need to probably change, too. Uh, he brought out just... Yes. structure organization that he said if i'm going to put the spotlight on you and i'm gonna get people to come here well people are going to want a certain type of business because obviously i'm bringing them here you can't keep doing that old way of business with the people that i'm trying to bring in. and you're here. gonna to have to fire those people you got hired and hire business people that's the only way it could happen you got to change and the it's whole not mindset personal. it's business it's not personal yeah you can't hire your friends if they're not business-minded people, you got me? If he's going to bring in corporation, you got to have people who understand corporation, how they operate. They expect things to be smooth in writing, done. You see what I'm saying? Oh, so, totally. Yeah, they don't give money without everything being up and up and up. Yeah, it just ain't no let's talk about it. No, it's, no, yeah. things have to be on the up and up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... I, I worked at the HBCU for 40 years, and I saw some things that took place that shouldn't. And they only hurt the university for hundreds of years, you know. I remember I went in to talk to Marina Kasim, 
And obviously, I was on the rise, really doing something in baseball. And I asked him, I said, give me $10,000. I'll take baseball to a place you've never seen. He laughed. He thought it was funny. See, that's the kind of mentality that exists with people. You see, if they don't, they don't want to, <laughs> it's no telling what I could have done with the $10,000 because of what I did without it. You got me? Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of things I could have done to take baseball to a different level. I would have been motivated because I would have felt I had the support of someone. I never had the support of anyone at Southern. I did it literally on my own. And I know what Dion did. He spent a lot of his money to fix things, do things. And it wasn't appreciated. Mm -mm. It wasn't appreciated because the man in charge sat on his fanny and only took in, he looked at the money that came in. And he's know his life is short term, so he don't give a damn about whether or not the money keep coming in. In two or three years, he'll be gone. He'll let that problem be for someone else. You got me? So that's why he didn't make the offer. And that's an interesting, unique perspective because a lot of people that are speaking on this don't understand the inner workings of administrators at HBCUs. And they think it's one way, but don't really know how this works. You, from a perspective, 40 years of dealing with administrators, and you're talking about decade after decade of changing administrators at the top and being able to still network your way through that have i'm pretty sure tons of stories to say we could have been so much more if they only would have invested in saw the vision the same way that i did yeah it could have done and the point is they can't say because it's private money you can't say you couldn't do it it's not state money it's private money you could do a lot with private money and that's why i would have been able to pay his coaches give him the money, I would have I would have given him something he would be motivated. I would put that big basket of gold out there in front of him <laughs> and say, reach for it, Prime. Go at it, Prime. Yeah. This could be yours, Prime. Got to keep it, keep it, it some incentives. You got to keep it flowing Instead like there's something more to work for. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think he felt like there was nothing more to do here. There was nothing he could do. Yeah. That's what happens when you're dealing with bonehead people in those positions. And I know I'm being hard, but damn it, somebody got to call them out. And they had 90% of the HBCUs. They hold them back because my man is playing with his phone. Yeah. You know? He's still like, we yeah. need. To you know, they, they're not seeing, they're not seeing what is going on in order that was going to make the university better. They only care about it when they are there. They, they have looked at the history. They know it's going to be short lived. So I give less than a damn what happens. Man, let me ask this. Do you blame him for taking the Colorado job? No. <laughs> no, you can't blame him. Why would you want to stay there and go through the hassle? The hassle? Well, you know, and it's interesting because – at the same time, when you look at being able to, it's hard to compete against that. And that's the way you get the PWI talk to the HBCU talk. And when you look at the HBCUs, and you know for yourself when you talk about the limited resource, but when you get something like that dropped into your hands, you then, at that instant moment, instead of trying to decide on the fly as it's happening, I'm already planning five years ahead on what we need to do to already plan five years to keep this man. I got a plan in place. The moment he stepped foot on the campus, we already planning forward to do everything we can to, to keep him. I'm meeting with all the business people in the community. I'm meeting with all my boosters and alums. I am meeting with everybody already planning. So when that day comes, when the day does come, we're going to be prepared instead of me standing there like my pants are down and I didn't even know this was going to come and I wasn't prepared. And I felt like for Jackson State, they weren't prepared for this. They weren't prepared. They never made any plans to be able to say, knowing this day was coming. I'm never going to let a guy outbid me when he playing with funny money because the, 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 the AD at Colorado said he doesn't have the money. Hmm. He made the offer, so it's funny money. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm using the word funny money. I know exactly I know. what you mean. But it's not guaranteed really, currently. Huh? It's not currently guaranteed to where I could put it in your hand right. right now. Why couldn't this man have done the same thing? Knowing that this guy is going to bring in money. Why couldn't he have done it? Because he didn't want him making more money than him. That's what a lot of those HBCU presidents, they don't want. Oh, athletic sport guy making more money than them, even though they do less than the coach. Because nobody knows who the hell the president is of a university, mm -hmm. but they know who the football coach is or the basketball coach. They know that. And Prime was kind of put into a position where, you know, people looked at him as this savior to where he was the head football coach, he was the athletic director, he was the president, hell, he damn near was the, the commissioner of the conference. He what? he had um, he was a man of many hats in order to try to bring in people and the notoriety to say, hey, this is where I'm at now. We have some struggles here. And he instantly came in. You saw the practice field. We had Walmart donate money to redo the practice field. He donated money out of his own pocket in order to help build a facility in terms of football operations to get things done. But I promise you, like you said, if I was the AD or if I'm the, the president, I'm out every day working my ass out figuring out what more ways can we do to help this man because he can bring something to the table. But what more can I bring to the table where he won't feel like he in this fight by himself? You got to understand when you got a once in a lifetime gift. You got to understand when you got him. They never gonna get that again. It's over. <laughs> and if you can't understand it, and they the president didn't, you know they was talking smack rather than they been saying man. They should have been saying that at the beginning of the year when the team was really rolling. Man, we got to figure out something. We got to call this guy. You do that you, instantly when you get the number one recruit in the nation. You got to start talking to this man. Hey, man, listen, we're going to put the package together. And they could have been talking about it. They had to know this was coming. And they weren't prepared. They were not prepared. And I'm not going to hold yep. the AD. I'm not going to hold the AD at Jackson accountable. Because they don't let AD make decision. The presidents make decision. The ADs don't make any decisions, the presidents. Boy, when you talk about that AD president talk, that's the one where it goes back and forth. It sounds like a power struggle uh, when you look at what's a vision for something, where direction, because clearly the AD had a vision and went out and reached out to Dion. Now, once I did this, I need the support of everybody continue to keep what we have going, going he didn't because get that. yeah, because it's a once like you say you don't get this again. You know they're not gonna. Yeah. They're not. Uh, uh, we had the golden egg and we dropped it, and it splattered all over the place, and you can't put the pieces back together. It was like Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> all right, let's take a break. Let Coach cool down, cause hey, I like that coach. That's fire. I feel like this is what your game speeches used to sound like. We're going to go out there and we're going to win one today. I like this. This is what I love about chopping it up with Kato, all right? And I hope y'all love it, too, because if you do, hit that subscribe button before we go to break, all right? So stay tuned. We'll be right back for more Chopping It Up with Kato. Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or your wide variety of new and new safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African safe and lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in the city of Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground.
It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. VTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, checking up the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyVTR.com have a passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador, Kador here. There's, There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tool, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's full generation strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. You're your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. VTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, checking up the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyVTR.com. All right, we're back with more Chopping It Up with Kadar. Of course, we're taking that last break. And in football, Coach, they say put them foes up because it's the fourth quarter. I mean, we're about to get ready. I see that. Yeah, we got the close. Do it again for him on that camera. See, put them foes up for him, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there it is. No, no, you did it the right way. That's how you had to do it like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, you had to do it like that. And if you hear my voice, be sure to hit that subscribe button right there and get that notification. Of course, as you know, if you're keeping up with us, what if you're going to come back and watch this later? We're talking about Deion Sanders. And of course, he's left Jackson State to take the head coaching job at Colorado, but he's still going to coach this team in the Celebration Bowl and then go over to Colorado and take on uh, his position full time. Coach, this is a topic that I can tell is passionate because a lot of times when it comes to these schools of HBCUs in which one you coached at for over 40 years and through the highs and lows through the change of administrators you found a way to find success even with the limited resources you created resources with no facilities you brought facilities and so nobody knows for me when I talk to them better than you what it's like in terms of this process and what Coach Sanders ultimately probably had to deal with at Jackson State. And do you feel like, and I'm going to use what Dion did there and use for you here with Southern University. You go to this institution, and regardless if you did it for 40 years or he did it for two years, and you bring resources and you do these things, and then it seems like after you gone, that appreciation factor does not seem to be there. And for Dion, does not seem like because he chose to move on that the appreciation factor is there for him. And I say this all the time for you as Southern, I don't feel like the appreciation factor for the Southern community and athletics is there for you considering what you did when you got there. There was nothing. 
And for 40 years, you dealt with everything you could in order to build. You could have went anywhere else. You could have walked away. You could have given up. But you handled the adversity as a man. And that's why I like your book, Against All Odds. And you found success in order to make successful options for kids and young men the same way I felt like Dion did at Jackson State. And I feel like in our community, they like what you do for me now. But when you're gone, where's that appreciation factor? Well, the thing that that I was able to do is that I didn't dep depend on the administration. The same way Dion did not. Yes. Yeah. It was me against the world in there. And everywhere I went to actually help, it was a stumbling block. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. And I mean, just why wouldn't they want to do it for the kids? I couldn't understand. So they forced me to find a way. They forced me to find a way. They put me in a mode that says, I'm gonna prove you all, I'm gonna get this done. Did you ever feel like like you want like they wanted you to fail or to quit? Well, I'm I'm not gonna say that you probably can surmise that. Mm -hmm. Cause when somebody <laughs> tells you I got a vision you, to be successful and you, you start telling me no, yeah. no, and I'm telling you, look what I'm capable of doing. But I wouldn't take that that position because I didn't want nothing to stumble me. See, I took a, stayed with a positive outlook. And what I did was avoided dealing with those people. And that way I could stay positive and get things done. And I gotta say that the white community in Baton Rouge and around the country really stepped up big time to help me. Because they understood what I was trying to do. It wasn't about me, it was the kids. And I made it about the kids. And when you make things about something other than yourself, you'll be successful. And when you looked at the white community willing to help you being at an HBCU, did you first knock on the doors of the black community and realize it was tough to get that help? It was very tough because you had to go to the people right there first in the administration. And, uh, you know, I did something that shouldn't have been able to be done because you need to get permits to build on state property. Because they had blocked me, I built the baseball field without a permit. <laughs> Don't say that now. Well, I guess the years are going by to hell with well, it now. <laughs> they could arrest me. He said statute of limitations. Yeah, it's open with yeah. that. It's there. <laughs> they forced me to. They forced me to do it because they wouldn't help me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to build. And I did. So I, I really hate because I'm a law abiding citizen, <laughs> tax paying law abiding citizen. But they forced me. That's a great story. But you broke that one for a good cause because you had your vision and yeah. you would not be denied. And That's the point. I'm, and it was like God, Jehovah God, blinded them when I was building this field. They were passing there every day. <laughs> to come on campus, they saw it. To leave off campus, they saw it. It was like God blinded them. So they didn't stop me. And so what I would have done in that position, watching a guy like you realizing we may not have had the resources or when you came to me and I may not have been able to give you what you needed right there, I would have came, you would have had all the moral support out of me. You won't. I didn't have that either. A uh, 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 white, uh, the top choice guy. Howard White. Howard White. Maybe related to you. I don't know. Maybe somewhere. Yeah, but maybe. Howard White was president of the SGA, Student Government Association. And I went to him and asked him if he would ask the students to vote on giving me some seed money so I could build a field. And he thought it was a good idea. And they they passed it. Student Give the student kudos. They gave me the thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars seed money, and when I tell you, I was able to do so much with that thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. I was able to get brought in hundreds of truckload of dirt, hundred of truckload of sand, get the national guard to come in, build a fence, buy some seed, all with fourteen thousand dollars. That's not normally possible. They say you stretched that thing out, didn't you? I remember thought about Jesus when he fed all those people with five fish mm -hmm. and it was left over, some left over. I'm telling you now, that's what I was seeing. Nobody knew that as much as I did because 
I kept saying, how could I still have money left over when I spent all? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think when you look at it the same way with like Dion, what's destined for you is destined for you. Yeah. And when people put these roadblocks up and you continue to persevere and push forward, you will realize the blessings that will continue to come down because deep down, it was genuine in terms of what you was doing. It wasn't about self-gratification. And at the end of the day, it was there to help the university, not Roger Kadar. Couldn't take it with me. Couldn't take it with me. My wife used to fuss at me and told me that so many times, that you know, people don't appreciate what you're doing. But I said, the kids do. I was doing it for the kids. You know, and Dion was doing some the same thing for the kids. And uh, uh, he's put a lot of his money up. He built a lot of things. That those emblems, I believe, he spent his money to put emblems up, I believe, all around that universe. She had the unbelievers believe it. He made the unbelievers believe, Ted Perry. Now, because the guy sitting in the seat of power didn't believe, hmm. even though he lied and said he believed, the damn president wouldn't come up with the money, wouldn't even try didn't have the vision to see that this man gonna keep making the money for us in years to come. All I need him to stay is two or three more years. That's the way you gotta look at it. He wasn't gonna stay forever. The coach has said, you know, I made all the money. It really wasn't about the money. It was just about the resources because I needed the money for my assistant coaches. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've lived a good life. I have the money, but my assistants, I got to make sure I support the people that support me. I got to make sure the people that's helping me build this program and take these young men lives to the next level that I put them in a position to also be good too. And if you can't take care of them, then I have to go somewhere that will ultimately take care of them. But like you said before, Colorado with the funny money just saying what we will and what we can do, but it ain't like they wrote the check and said, here go the check right here to show you. And you said in the same case, Jackson State could have played that same game. Somebody said, did they post date the check? <laughs> my point is, <laughs> my point is, he had vision that he could see what's gonna happen with this man. We couldn't see it. That's what gets me the that's what gets me, Perry. Mm. We couldn't see it. We could have put up the funny money. Because you could see him bringing it in. Colorado, that's all they did. The AD said, went to the president and the board of regents said, we're going to be able to get the money because of him. Why couldn't that president have the vision? Tell me why, Perry. I want to say it, but I'm not going to say it. I okay. just. <laughs> you just better not say it, but damn it, I can't believe. I can't believe. I can't believe that president had the audacity to only come in on. Offer the guy $1 million. I think one of the biggest problems in our community, we continue to see it all the time, uh, when it comes to supporting us, people that look like each other, supporting your business to support my business, we're always looking at, let me get that cousin hookup. Let me get that deal. And we always try to undervalue a talent or we undervalue uh, something that somebody brings to the table because if I put value to it, that means I have to pay the potential price for that. And a lot of people don't want to pay the price for something that, but they want everything though. They want everything for nothing. And I think when you look at us in our community, that's one of the biggest things that we deal with, wanting everything for nothing. And we constantly undervalue each other. And as long as we consistently undervalue each other, we'll consistently miss out on the mark of how can we grant ultimately build our value as a community. As long as we continue to try to hold our value low, if we look at it low, what you think the outside world from other communities is going to look at it as? They're going to look at the value low because they're saying, I don't see you adding any value to it. So why should I add any value to it? And I think that's where we consistently miss the mark. Lowballing ourselves, trying to get over, trying to get the hookup, trying to get the, the quick whatever. In that case, wasn't the case. It was just you had poor managers. Yeah. Poor managers of a golden situation. That's all that is. It yeah. wasn't no cousin who trying to get no Well, I, I say that because outside of Dion, he's huge, and everybody won't be able to be that huge to be in that position. But there's a Roger Kadar. There's a guy who had to pull his bootstraps up and get it out the mud, as they say, and ultimately built it himself. It wasn't nothing there before, but you built it yourself. Yeah. 
and that was a value in terms of the man of Roger Kadar in terms of building a program. That wasn't the Roger Kadar baseball team. It was the Southern University baseball team coached by Roger Kadar. But you took it upon yourself and made it your mission for 40 plus years in order to bring value to that brand, to bring value to those young men to one day that value in them could get them jobs, whether it's a career, it can get them jobs in major league. And you created all of that with a vision when everybody told you no. So what I'm saying is it speaks to the common guy like you that became the superstar and the legend because you had to work your way through the mud to get out the mud in order to become that. A guy like Dion, he came in the superstar. You know, he didn't need that job. He could have bolted like he did. He, he could do whatever he wanted. So for him, the dedication wasn't quite there the same like it was for you. But he did show some dedication. And for me, that should be appreciated. But more so, the biggest appreciation be for, should be for somebody like you who wanted to deal with it and dealt with it for 40 years when everybody, I'm pretty sure, told you, Kadar, get out of there. Go somewhere. Go try this somewhere else. But you saw it as a mission because it wasn't about self. It was about the young men. You always say that. It was about getting these guys what they needed to be successful and at the same time no matter who told me no i was gonna still go for what i believe to help them and it still worked out to help the institution when when, when you won games it didn't say roger kadar and the boys won games it said southern university won games Let and that's a you. value you know and the thing that i'm most proud of Barry, is that my players felt that i could do anything they really felt that you know how powerful that is to a coach? When the people he's leading feels that you can do anything. And I had to tell him at some point, I can't get this done. Yes, coach. And there were parents. I talked to a woman who wanted her son to come play for me from Bahamas. Never met this woman before. In my life, she called me and her son had gone to a boarding school in Pennsylvania. And he was so core short, and she said to me, you're, kind, you're the kind of man that can do anything. I heard about you. You can do anything. I said, I can't play with the grades. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't. That's where you draw the line? I draw the line. I said, I can't play with the grades if he's short. I can't do nothing with that. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. I said, now, if you got the money, I could get him in the university. But I can't play yeah. with the grades. So, you know, but you have to make people understand because there are people like me who accomplish things and people start patting them on the back and telling them how good they are, how great they are, and they let it go to their head. Mm -hmm. I wasn't letting that stuff go to my head. I had knew I had to remain balanced, grounded, and stay the course. Do the things that I know I could do. I still do it to, the, to this day. And uh, I feel so good about myself because I can look now and say, I'm glad I did it my way. The only mistake I made when I retired, I didn't play the song My Way by <laughs> Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra. My Way. You know, and I listen to that song quite often on YouTube. My Way, because I did it my way. I did it my way, and not that many people can say they did it their way. I, I didn't sell out. I wasn't a sellout. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's why I'm sitting here with you, because I feel like you're a real one. I got much respect and much love for you, man, and, 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 and I think that story within itself should be a movie. That should be a movie against all odds. should be a movie. Well, I know you're going to get it. You're going to get it, but we're going to get a movie done. So I'm working on it. Yeah, we need to get that into a movie because there's value into that. And there's a story that can motivate the next generation of somebody telling them no, no, no. But when you got a vision, can't nobody stop what God has. That's for right. You. And you know what? In the court of law, I could go to the court of law. That was a chancellor, McClendon. Mm -hmm. McClure. McClure was his name. Mm -hmm. When he told me in 1987, there would never be baseball played on this campus. In the office full of coaches, we were meeting. And I just looked, sat there, there and smiled. And they had one white coach in there, a football coach. And he said, why would you not want it? Baseball is successful. He said, it just won't happen. It has no value to us. 
And I just sat in there and smiled. And today, you got Lehigh's Field. Man. All right, everybody. We have reached the end of another show. This passion today. I was, I'm excited. I feel good, man. This, this is the motivation I needed to Let's get. Let's do another hour. <laughs> I think somebody else is coming in after us. Sure. But, of course, we want to thank you guys for the support. As always, I'm noticing the subscribers are going up. So, you guys are listening to me. Y'all are hitting that notification. And Coach Kadar, hey, he's loving it. Trust me, because he calls me. He wants to know what's going on with the analytics. <laughs> but we want to thank you guys for supporting, man. Hey, as always, I appreciate it. Coach Roger Kadar appreciates it. And we're going to keep rolling this December. My birthday is Saturday. Coach going to get me with a, uh, but hey, I love it. I'm ready, baby. All right, I'm getting, getting older and wiser. So every day I get a chance to do a show with him, I'm learning so much more. But want to thank you guys for tuning in and hit that subscribe button. Of course, be sure to follow with us. You know, to catch us every Monday day and hey we love to have your support make some comments down in the comment section interact with us as well and as always coach give you you got to give coach get coach on there you got to give his uh there you go we out of here peace